Hey Michael with X-Force PC, I want to talk to you about the honeycomb yoke. There's been a lot of discussion about this lately. Of course, Austin reviewed it and gave a very impassioned review of it. What I want to do is give a more uh, X's and O's type uh, overview of it and talk about how it's different than the Logitech and also the Yoko. The Logitech, you're looking at about 175 US dollars. That's the first big difference. You're looking at about 250 for the honeycomb and then you're looking at a thousand for the yoko i don't have the yoko here because i have it integrated into a cockpit that i really don't want to yank it out of so what are some of the obvious differences let's let's go axis by axis so we have the roll axis here on the logitech we get about 45 degrees which is actually the same or very close to the same as what you get on the yoko so in that regard, they are the same. The honeycomb, you get 90 degrees in each direction. Okay, I'm just gonna take this bullet point by bullet point. Now, as far as the feel on the uh, roll axis, on the Logitech, it's actually not terrible. It's probably, well, it's a lot better than the elevator uh, or pitch uh, axis. But there's a very solid detent in the middle, which a lot of people don't like. Um, it does increase slightly in resistance. The further you turn it, there is more resistance. Now on the honeycomb, there is a very soft detent in the middle. Obviously the resistance goes basically to zero in the middle. But once you start to turn it, Appearance-wise, I cannot tell that it gets any harder to turn it from, let's say, here to here to here to here to here. It doesn't feel like it gets any stronger, the resistance. However, it probably does. I'm just not able to measure it with my hand um, because I, I can feel that there's like a bungee or sort of a rubber band type situation going on in there. So it does obviously get slightly harder, but it's very difficult to tell. Now on the Yoko, it has much stiffer bungees in it, and so it gets a lot stiffer when you go to turn it. You can really feel the resistance. And in Austin's opinion, he felt like that was a little bit more realistic, having that resistance sort of build up more quickly. Uh, again, on the honeycomb, really difficult to tell that there's much resistance, more resistance here than there is here. Now let's talk about the, um, the pitch axis. The pitch axis on the Logitech yoke is pretty terrible. It's very difficult to be smooth. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm like doing you know as I, as I do this because it, it sort of sticks. Um, there is a hard detent in the middle, and also customers complain that when you have it turned and you do the elevator axis that it really binds on you, and I can feel that. It binds, uh, does bind on you more when you have it turned. But a hard detent, fairly short travel. Now on the honeycomb, I would say the travel is fairly equal fairly equal the distance of travel you know I, I realize I could get my ruler out and I could measure it but just to the feel and feel is what's important it feels like a similar amount of travel maybe a tiny tiny little bit more on the honeycomb but it, it's it's so small it's hard to even tell um, it's easier to be smooth there is a more noticeable type of, I don't know if I'd call it a detent, but a, you know, there's a spot right in the middle where obviously it settles and then, it's, then you get the resistance as you push or pull. Um, the resistance does increase as you push or pull much more noticeably than on the roll axis, uh, but not to the degree it does on the Yoko. Now on the Yoko, the, um, the pitch axis is softer in the middle and gets progressively harder, more so than the honeycomb. 
it is a significantly longer travel. That's one thing that the Yoko kind of knocks it out of the park on is their, uh, and you can go look the specs up on the website. I, I don't have the exact specs, but the elevator or pitch axis feels almost twice as long. It's probably not twice as long. It's probably more like 50%, 60% longer, but it's significantly longer. So that, t that sort of covers the axes. Let's talk about uh, casing. So the Logitech casing is um, one of the smaller of the three. Um, it's, you, again, you can look the specs up online. The good thing about the Logitech is a lot of panels have been designed to fit it. The Honeycomb, that's a little taller order. I think Stay Level Avionics is coming out with one that, that supports this. Um, the Avionics panel from Volaire would not work with this at all. It's significantly taller than the Logitech. Um, whereas the Avionics panel that comes from Volaire will work with the Yoko. Um, you simply put the Yoko on your platform first, then drop the Avionics panel down on top of it, and the casing for the Yoko kind of goes behind the Avionics panel. So it is technically compatible. Um, probably would have to drill some holes to make that happen. And the Yoko has a very small casing as well. Um, on the order of the Logitech, again, you can look those specs up online. These are just kind of a, an, an overview. Um, now, if you have this timer on the front of the Logitech. That's questionable how useful that is. I know some people probably use it. Um, as far as buttons go, fairly comparable between all three. They all have a hat switch. They all have some form of trim buttons. There are, um, as far as feel goes, I would say that the Yoko's definitely have the best feel. Um, and then the, the Honeycomb second and the Logitech third. Um, also, the um, as far as talking about the overall unit itself, the Yoko is almost 100% um, metal. And you can really tell that the case is metal. Everything feels metal. I'm sure there's, there's plastic in there. The switches feel metal. Everything feels very industrial. The honeycomb, the switches and the hat switch and, and the buttons and so forth feel like, feel similar to what the Logitech has done. They're plastic uh, on both of these units and just the action and the motion feels similar to what you get on the Logitech. And let, that brings us to the switch panel because Logitech has an optional switch panel you can put on here. The switches on the switch panel feel almost identical to the switches on the Logitech switch panel, which is a separate item. doesn't come with um, the Logitech yoke. And also that switch panel that comes with the Logitech yoke requires a plug-in for X-Plane for it to work, which makes it quicker to set up, but anytime you have a plug-in, that's something that also can screw up. So with the, um, the honeycomb, excuse me, um, these are all buttons in X-Plane that can be assigned. So, you know, typically you'd assign them to what's labeled here, but technically you could assign them to anything. So they don't, it does not require um, any plug-in and you know, that has its advantages too, because as I mentioned, you can assign the buttons to anything that you want. And Laminar will put, Laminar Research will put a profile out there that will assign these buttons to what makes sense. And then if you want to change it, you can. The Yoko um, doesn't really have a whole lot of buttons on it. The hat switch comes pre-programmed, and I'm pretty sure there's a profile in X-Plane, which um, really the only other thing is pitch trim and, um, and roll trim. Uh, that you can really program on that. And there, I think there's a push to talk button on the Yoko. Not a lot of buttons there. So um, overall, the overall story on these things is if you have like no money and every penny counts and you've got, you got to fly, but you've got to spend the least amount of money possible, the Logitech is the better deal in that regard. It does come with a three lever throttle, which I don't have hooked up here. 
uh, for the 179 ish dollars. Uh, the throttle isn't bad, by the way. It's not a bad throttle for what it is, for what it's made of. It's all plastic, but it's not bad. Um, if you're looking for the item that's the best thing for the money, then the honeycomb makes the best sense. Yes, it costs $250, but it comes with a switch panel. And if you took a Logitech and you added a switch panel to it, it would come out to about $250-ish. Um, it does not come with a throttle. So if you get one before the, uh, the honeycomb throttle comes out, I'd recommend maybe just buying a $59 Logitech USB throttle to get you by. Or you could just tough it out and use you know, F1 and F2 on the keyboard to do your throttle. And then last but not least, the Yoko. The Yoko is for the guy that cares about feel and having the best possible uh, feel for the pitch and the roll axis um, and having a really long elevator travel. So if you're putting together a home cockpit and it's really high end, you're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, then probably the Yoko is the better way to go because it does have the best feel of the three. Now, that being said, um, this isn't far behind. So don't feel like, well, I'm gonna have terrible feel with the honeycomb, you're not. But if you must have the very best feel and you prefer the feel of all metal, then the Yoko is definitely the way to go. I like the Yoko and I like the honeycomb, so I hate to say anything negative about the two, but I'm just trying to help you differentiate between you know, which one. So for the masses, the honeycomb is the way to go. Uh, for the person that just has no money, the Logitech, and then for the person that is building a Cadillac setup that it depends heavily on realism, the Yoko is probably the best choice.